Hello and welcome to Forex.Academy, your number one website for Forex and crypto education and analysis. In today's edition, we're going to be looking at the basics of statistical analysis. This is part two in the series. In this video, we will continue to uncover the basic ideas about probability and the rules of summation and multiplication. Probability. Probability is the term given to measure the likelihood of an event to occur. If we are entirely certain that the event will occur, the probability is 1 or 100%. If an event can't occur, the probability is zero. If the event is equally likely to occur or not, its probability is 0.5 or 50%. Thus, we see that the probability ranges between zero and one. No probability can be greater than one or less than zero. Estimated probability. Usually in science and trading, there is no way to know the probability of value in advance. The usual way to assess it is to do a finite number or trials and calculate the relative frequency of occurrence or the proportion of the event. This value is not the real probability, but an estimate of the probability. The larger the number of trials, the more accurate this estimate is. The concept of estimated probability is really important because a lot of people think that the probability obtained using a sample is the real one, when in fact it might be too optimistic or pessimistic. That is to say the sample by pure luck could be very good or very bad. There are other cases, for example, when playing roulette or the roll of a die, or even a fair coin toss where the probability of occurrence is known in advance. In that case, it's quite easy to compute it. The probability of an event happening is the number of ways that the event can occur divided by the total number of cases. For example, the probability of obtaining a 1 in a die is 1 divided by 6. The probability of a 7 to occur in 2 dice rolling is 6 occurrences out of a total of 36 combinations, thus 1 in 6. The probability of a 2 coin toss obtaining 1 head and 1 tail is 2 possible cases divided by 4 total combinations of heads and tails. Thus, 0.5 or 50%. Fear odds. Fear odds is another quantity which gives information about the probability that comes from gambling. If a game is to be fair, each player should expect no advantage, no edge. Then, if the likelihood of the possible outcomes is different, the amounts to bet should be modified to compensate for this fact. Take a look at this example which identifies those principles. Rules when combining probabilities. Addition rule. Adding probability means answering the all question, such as what are the odds of event A or B or C happening? For the addition rule, we have two cases. Mutually exclusive events. With mutually exclusive events, there is no overlap. If one event happens, the other event cannot occur. In this case, the probability of occurrence of A or B or C is the sum of probabilities of each. For example, what are the odds of getting even numbers on a rolling die? We know that there are three even numbers on a die, 2, 4 and 6, each having one sixth of the probability of occurrence. Thus the likelihood of getting an even number is 3 times 1 out of 6, or 0.5. Non-mutually exclusive events. If the events are not mutually exclusive, there can be overlap between them. This can be visualized in a Venn diagram. In that case, the probability of overlap must be subtracted from the sum of separate events. For example, if one card is drawn from a 52 card deck, what is the likelihood the card is a jack or heart? Here is the way we calculate this. The multiplication rule. Multiplying probabilities answers the AND question, such as what is the probability of A and B happening? If the events are independent, then the occurrence of one event does not affect the appearance of others. In this case, the odds of several events happening together is the product of their probabilities. For example, what are the odds in a coin toss game of having two heads in a row? We know the odds of each head is 0.5, then the odds of having two heads in a row is 0.5 times 0.5, equaling 0.25 or 25%. To know the odds of an end losing streak of a trading strategy, it's rather easy. We just need to know the percent losers of a system. For example, what are the odds of obtaining eight losers in a row if the percentage of winners of my strategy are 45%? This is demonstrated here. If the events are not independent, we should use the conditional probability formula, but this is an advanced subject beyond the scope of this video. If you enjoyed the video then please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below about anything you would like us to discuss in future or if you have any questions about this particular video. Have a great day.